welcome to this complete overview of Chord Generator by Mario Nieto. You can think of this as a video user guide for Chord Generator version 1. This video is designed to help you get quickly up and running in combination with a detailed user guide in PDF form that is provided with Chord Generator. Chapter markers are included so you can jump to the relevant sections of the video when required though for first-time users, I'd suggest watching the video all the way through. Chord Generator is both a standalone program and a plugin in all the usual formats. The plugin version produces no sound and can be used with all your synths and sample-based plugins. I'll be using Chord Generator within Bitwig, so in order to use it, it's merely placed in front of the plugin of your choice. Your DAW may be slightly different, but simply ensure that Chord Generator's MIDI is routed to your sound producing plugin. The standalone version can generate sound, and we'll look at that at the end of the video. Whilst getting accustomed to using the application, I would suggest leaving tooltips on. You can toggle this on and off via the settings cogwheel in the top right hand corner. So let's begin by looking at the top bar of Chord Generator with tooltips switched on. Working our way from left to right, we can see there's a Reset All Parameters button and a Bypass button that allows MIDI to pass through, unaffected by Chord Generator. The Preset section lets you save and load presets as well as selecting one at random, and the Undo and Redo buttons are followed by the Paintbrush icon that lets you change the appearance of the plugin to your liking, and to resize the plugin, simply drag the bottom right of the plugin outwards. The top of the screen is dominated by a large dice. This lets you randomize all allowed parameters and can be useful in finding happy accidents or a chord pattern that you wouldn't have previously thought of. Smaller dice are available throughout the plugin that let you randomize individual sections. To exclude a section from the global randomize, simply lock that section using the lock symbol. Moving down from the large dice, we see the selected chord editor. To understand this, it's important to realize that there is more than one way to trigger or play back chords. The chord box allows you to select the chord type for the currently selected pad at the base of the screen. The root box selects the root note for the chord transposition. You can see that the values are reflected in the pad that you've selected for editing. The keyboard display also displays the default keyboard mappings. However, if the keyboard symbol is selected adjacent to the chord pads, you'll see that the mapping disappears, and instead, the selected pad can be played across the keyboard. To round out the chord editor, you can double the selected chord's voices by adding a higher octave using the Gospel button, and the dice will randomize the chord type. To randomize the chord type each time a pad is triggered, select this symbol, and we'll see the same symbol crop up in other sections of the interface. So let's look at the two methods of triggering with the keyboard symbol illuminated and a major ninth chord selected. When the root note is C and we select a chromatic scale, we'll get the following effect. As we move up the keyboard, we're moving up in a major ninth, but chromatically. So, to play a C major 9 followed by an F and a G major 9, we would play the keys C, F, and G. Now to play the same chord progression with the keyboard symbol switched off, I've assigned the C major 9, F major 9, and G major 9 to the first three pads, which are triggered by this octave of your keyboard. So if you watch the keyboard at the base of the screen, you'll see I'm triggering the pads assigned to those keys. Moving to the chord editor itself, the number displayed at the top left is the currently selected pad, and each note of the chord is represented in a row, with controls affecting each note in columns. So the first column displays the number of notes in the chord itself. To those of you versed in music theory, this column is not displaying note intervals, so the rows marked thirds and fifths don't represent the third and fifth notes of a scale. 
In the case of the third, it represents the third note of the chord time. So with a major chord selected, you'll see that the three notes played by the chord are represented as first to third, with an extra bass note in the root note of the chord. The same applies to minor chords. By selecting a seventh chord, we are adding the fourth note played to the chord, and the more exotic chord variations, such as this augmented major ninth chord, display the five notes played as first to fifth, in addition to the bass note. The bass note can be toggled off, as can the other notes of a chord, and using the lock symbol, you can lock the entire row of modifiers. The inversion column allows you to transpose the individual notes of the chord up or down an octave to create different inversions of the same chord. To quickly show this, I've created three different inversions of a major ninth chord on three different pads. If you want a bass note that doesn't follow the root of the chord, you can specify the number of semitones up or down that the bass note will play. The icons above the inversion column are identical to the velocity column, so let's have a look at them in combination with velocity. Here in the velocity column, we can simply click or drag to create velocity values for each note lane. The dice will give us random values, and the next icon will randomize values each time a pad is triggered. The link icon will link all values to a single click of the mouse. The reset button returns values to their default values, and the lock icon will prevent each column's value from being randomized or adjusted. There may be times when you wish velocities to be randomized, but within a certain range. For example, when playing a sound that's sensitive to velocity, such as a piano. To do so, you can drag the bar above the column to select the range value that will be generated. Subsequent randomized values will be within the range specified. The strum column allows you to control the delay of each voice individually and has the same control set as velocity, but with two important differences. The strum knob adjusts the delay progressively for a more natural effect and can be either positive, i.e. from the bass note upwards, or a down strum from the highest note downwards. The grid icon ensures that delays align with the project tempo and adjust the delays to subdivisions of that tempo. Of course, individual delays can be applied using the sliders and the random range bar is useful in creating controlled random delays. The final column is the repeater section. This allows you to create and control repetitions of each individual note. This can be switched on or off globally and on a per note basis. The first icon is for the grid control. This toggles between displaying quantized values for each repeating note, or for a more avant-garde effect, switch the grid off and dial in values expressed in Hertz. Of course, you could also randomize the repeats for truly unpredictable results. But in order to keep this under control when grid mode is on, you can limit the number of values to be randomized by simply selecting the delay value and reducing the number of random values to give more meaningful results. So let's have a look at an example of using all the columns together. With our inversion value selected, we can see in the velocity column that each time a chord is triggered, it will give us random velocities within a narrow range. The strum pattern, rather than generating notes like a guitar strum, has offset notes to generate a more keyboard-like pattern. So let's have a listen to that now. As you can see that the longest offset is that first note of the chord. And in combination with the repeater, we can create more pattern variations like so.
Below all the modifiers are the pads. I've already mentioned the two playback modes, so if you've jumped ahead in the video, have a look at the relevant chapter via the chapter markers. Here we can delete a single pad or multiple pads contents with the trash can icon. To copy a pad, simply drag an existing pad to another slot. You can also drag pads directly into your DAW as a MIDI file. Clicking on an empty pad will copy the contents of the top bar directly into the pad. If you don't want the pads to play when selected, then the hand icon to the right of the pads will toggle this on or off. Similarly, there may be times when you don't want the pads to be selected when they're triggered over MIDI, and this can be toggled on and off with the icon to its right. Above the keyboard mode icon is a magic wand that will automatically generate a new chord for each pad. As all 12 pads are affected, ensure that you've saved your own preset beforehand, or if you do forget, the undo button at the top of the screen will get you out of trouble. At the bottom of the screen is the global area. These controls affect all pads equally. The global octave will quickly transpose an octave up or down. The root note ensures that the generated notes align with the chosen note and scale in order to stay in key and to be musically correct. You can randomize both the root and the scale and set it to re-trigger scale variations with the relevant controls if you so wish. There are 57 different musical scales to choose from, and if the thought of a random scale being selected with each trigger seems scary, then thankfully you can limit the randomized scales to two or three meaningful variations. You can also edit or create your own scales. So if you want certain notes excluded from the end result, it's simply a case of deselecting them or adding extra notes for a custom scale. MIDI can be captured when your door is in playback mode, and the resulting MIDI data can be either exported to a MIDI file or dragged into your DAW. The keyboard at the bottom of the screen gives feedback as to which notes you're playing, as well as the trigger notes for playback of the pads over MIDI. Most parameters can be controlled by MIDI CCs. Simply right-click on a parameter and move a MIDI controller to assign it for total control. Finally, the standalone version comes with a mini sampler in which you can import your own samples, set looping points, and adjust an amplitude envelope with ADSR controls. In the settings menu, you can specify MIDI input and output devices, as well as an audio output when using the built-in sample playback. I hope this video has been helpful in getting you up and running with Chord Generator. Please subscribe to Mario Nieto World to be kept up to date about new releases and to learn more about Chord Generator, Harmony Bloom and any future products. So for now, thanks for watching.